So I'd like to invite all four of our keynote speakers to come up and sit up here. Um, and I'm going to introduce our first keynote speaker, um, and then each of the successive speakers will introduce the next one. Um, so the first person who's going to talk is Mac Mead um, from the Fight for Center, and I got to know Mac very early in my time at the BDA because he's part of the group that um, stewarded and created the North American Biodynamic Apprenticeship Program. Um, so I got to be on conference calls with him and a number of other people in this room monthly, people I'd never seen before. <laughs> Um, these wise voices helping me figure out how to navigate this program. Um, and then I got to meet him, and I was, first of all, astounded by how tall he was. <laughs> um, and really, the, the experience I really remember is going to the Pfeiffer Center for the Midwinter Intensive, which I know a lot of you have been to, um, and seeing his um, chalkboard drawings, really understanding the farm individuality and that like upside down human being thing, which didn't make any sense to me until he drew it on the chalkboard. I was like, oh, okay, I get it. Um, and how that relates to the animals and, and the stars and the minerals and like the amazing like biodynamic understanding of minerals, which I think he's going to talk to us about. So um, thank you so much, Mac, for starting us off. Um, and we'll go from there. So, uh, when I started at the Fellowship Community, there was about a half acre of gardens. A rusty old rototiller, wheelbarrows, shovels. We were in our young 20s. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I 
we got up to one acre, still wheelbarrows, old rototiller. We're going towards three acres and mostly providing for this home and uh, decided to get a tractor, whatever. But it was only vegetables, flowers, herbs, no animals. And I, I read this paragraph in the agriculture course. Now a farm comes closest to its own essence when it can be conceived of as a kind of independent individual individuality, a self-contained entity. In reality, every farm ought to aspire to this state of being a self-contained individuality. This state cannot be achieved completely, but it needs to be approached. This means that within our farms, we should attempt to have everything we need for agricultural production including, of course, the appropriate amount of livestock. It goes on to say that manures or fertility hauled in is like a medicine for a sickened farm. And here I am, I'm working in a healthcare community where the farming is part of the whole fabric of the community as in many camp in the Camp Hill villages. It's a true community-supported agriculture. So this, this sentence is in the back of my mind, haunting me as we're growing and hauling in. I was known as the guy with the blue dump truck an hour away to cow farms, horse farms, hauling in manures. For years, we didn't have the property to have larger animals. We got chickens. Got a sheep. Don't ever get just one sheep. <laughs> wow. If you want to sleep at night. Um, when we built our chicken shed, we, we made a, a room, you know, kind of like for your extra relatives are going to come visit. It was for the calf that we hoped to get someday. When we built the sheep shed, we built another one. Um, my wife and I dreamed of having cows. It's a great way to have cows in your dreams. You don't, <laughs> you don't have to muck out, you don't have to milk them. But I, I've developed a term that I think we suffered from, which I call C-A-T. This is cow anticipation disorder. <laughs> we kept hoping and hoping. And so luckily in 1997, the neighboring three generations family farm put their farm up for sale and we bought that. And that enabled us to have barns and on our own property that we owned and were able to get first horses. Um, and I want to put out a strong sense of gratitude to my wife who's not here today. She's a real animal person in our family. Um, so thanks to her especially, we were able to get horses and then, okay, so I think I have time for this story. It's my favorite story. <laughs> um, my wife and I started a 4-H group. The, the family farm that we bought was Durier, last name. Our 4-H, and we had, what, 20, 25 children, teenagers, different ages. We picked the name Durier Spirit, was the name of our 4-H group. We took a trip down to Seven Stars Farm in Kimberton, Pennsylvania. And we all got down on our hands and knees and begged David Griffiths, the farmer, if he ever had a heifer, a young calf, that he'd be willing to sell or give to us. <coughs> Would he consider that? Jersey cows, biodynamic. Anyone's been there, wonderful animals. Um, about two months later, I'm at home, upstairs, my wife's downstairs, I hear the phone ring. My wife is hooping and hollering. <laughs> She's the only one down there. Um, but I know instantly, that's David Griffiths. There's a cow on the way. And that was it. Picked her up. A little while later, She's four months old. She was born in the late fall, raised on a, a nurse mom. She's been in a barn all winter, 
hasn't been out on, on land, so to speak. So we bring this calf back in the back of a pickup truck. All the children in our group are there. It's just surrounding this calf. If it's late in the day, she goes to sleep in a nice little stall. Next morning, we go out there. And it's, so now it's April, late March, April. The grass is greening up. We, we let her out. We let her out. And she goes over to a fence post and starts eating some dirt. It's okay, my brother used to. I mean, we used to eat dirt. <laughs> but we, you know, we'd spit it out. So I'm thinking, oh, she's going to spit it out. No, she keeps eating. She eats a little more. There's green grass right there. She's not touching it. Uh, someone drives up with a tractor, it's a wet day, there's a little bit of dirt on the tire. She actually goes over and starts licking the soil on the tires of the tractor. And I'm thinking, oh my God. <laughs> I wasn't that experienced, you know, I, I grew up in Connecticut and I went to college, but I, that, otherwise <laughs> I didn't really have a training in, in, in dairy. And, uh, and that's, so this went on for about half an hour. And then she started nibbling some grass. It took me a couple of days to realize what what was this cow doing? My theme in I'm speaking about soils. Megan's going to speak about plants, Alex, animals, and Gunter, the human being. She was taking our soil. She was born three hours away in, Kemp in Pennsylvania. She was taking our soil into her and making that her, our place. Her biology, if you study what's in the cow's biology, mean, it's unbelievable. But she was getting herself started to do for our, so my motto is for the farm, from the farm. That's what, in the simple words, all this agricultural individuality is all about. For the farm, from the farm. Fast forward a few years, because I don't have a lot of time here. Um, we've got more cows, a few more horses. We've got manures. I've stopped hauling any manures in. We have this, we're treating the preps, we're treating the compost with preps. I put, for the first time, what I call homegrown compost, treated with the preps on a field where, that I've been growing in for 25 years rotations of vegetables. The color of the vegetables, the form. And I, you know, I had all these Pfeiffer teachers, you know, and I was doing all the preps and the calendar and everything, what I thought was pretty good till then. The quality was unbelievable. And this is in a field that's poor, relatively poor, high and dry on the crown of a hill, thin topsoil, it's a teacher field that teaches you how to grow. If you're not doing it right, things don't grow. It was, it was unbelievable to me, the change, the improvement. And so for me, that's unexplainable in normal, in normal terms. We had this nice workshop with Will Brenton yesterday. Conventional MPK and all this stuff, it, it's just kind of inept, doesn't really explain it. There's a holism that has to come in, a magic. And so I hold this belief that perhaps the individuality of the farm is like ourselves, in that. For us to work through our daily lives and what we have to do, the grief that was mentioned, we need a spiritual, we need something spiritual. I'll say for myself, that's a, a spiritual path that involves meditation. Meditation, for, I'll speak just personally, 
I have a meditation that I do in which, regardless of how the day has been, or the week, or the month, or the year, I can experience intense joy. I often feel, do I deserve that? Where is that coming from? There's a deep resource that is beyond us. Does the earth have that same resource? It's a question. Does she have a deep spiritual resource that when things are done right, and thank you, Ruff Steiner, for giving us suggestions, and preparations, and pictures, and that we might be able to put together something that could allow this deep resource of the earth to shine through? I feel that's what I was seeing when it all comes together in the right way. It doesn't always do that. But anyway, that's, that's what I wanted to share. And so in uh, 2006, I was asked if I would make a shift and take on the program, being the program director at the Pfeiffer Center which was begun with Hunter Hauck, 1996. I had helped with the programs of making preps for his courses. And uh, so we made, the hope was that I would work with him in his last year there. And that came about. And because he was retiring, <laughs> it's a great word, you know? What I've come to believe it means is that's when you choose to retire. You get a new set of tires and you start a new journey. You start speaking our farm. Gee whiz. A couple of months after I arrived, um, a young intern starts, originally from Chicago area, been in AmeriCorps. She has dreadlocks. Um, she's a vegan. She's getting into biodynamics. This is Megan Durney. <laughs> Who I feel very, I feel blessed that she came to the Pfeiffer Center. So Megan was an intern. We have normally have a one-year program, then a two-year program. Megan stayed on the first year, thought she would leave, stayed on the second year, and at the second year wanted to leave, uh, stayed on third year, fourth year staff. Megan's been there. And she took a year off in 2014 or so uh, to go to California, seemingly to learn and work with Harold Hogan, friend and master biodynamic practitioner, and especially seed saver, seed grower, to learn from him and also CSA. That was outwardly what she went to do. But actually, she went to meet her life partner, Kim Pace, and her wonderful son, Zach, who has now joined our team of the fellowship there where I worked for 30 years, is now this year combining with the Pfeiffer Center. We have one farm team, hoping to work production and education all together. We'll see, it's great, it's exciting. Um, Megan is an excellent gardener, excellent beekeeper, extremely gifted with our draft horses, with herb production and making products from herbs. Very active in social outreach programs that we do at the Pfeiffer Center and beyond that herself. Um, I would say she's socially gifted. She's a farmer, she's a gardener, she's an educator, she's a mentor. She's very interested in 
and biodynamics and spiritual science and active in the agriculture section and on the board of the BD Association and the planning committee for this conference. But I'll say, if you talk about relationships, I agree with Michael DeLeo at the end of his keynote where he shared what is the reality is what's in between things. We've got ourselves, we've got the farm. That individuality lives between. It lives in the dialogue between the people on the farm, between us and the animals, between us and all these, it's between. So it's an ever alive thing. And I think our dialogues over the years, or about 13 years or so, we've worked together. Um, something grows out of those dialogues. Something lives. That's where things grow. The soil is an organ of growth, and so are we. Thank you.